Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. Okay, today is all about decorating ears. Now I have completed two ears already on my little green rabbit. <clears throat> Excuse me. I just wanted to talk through what I did here because the second set of ears which I've sort of started thinking about and will work on in this video will be done slightly different. So this rabbit's going to be great because I'll be able to show you two sort of different styles as I go. So what I did with this one here is I, underneath this cladding, we'll call it, is the ear that we prepared with the wire going through and stitching it down. Okay, so then I went and cut another four pieces, two in the hessian and two in the green, and then sandwiched this in between with a whip stitch around the outer edge. So I noticed on some of the Instagram pictures of hairs, some ears are this size and some are this size. So it just gives you, in this scenario, two options of how to make your um, hairs ears. If you want really big chunky ones, add the cladding again. So cut the pieces out um, for a second time. If you want finer, thinner ears, use the piece that's been created here with the wiring and then decorate accordingly. So entirely up to you what sort of look you want. I then had a, um, a blouse that I picked up at an op shop that was of this lace. It was like a, a young girl's blouse that I got for a couple dollars. So a great place to look for pieces of lace that are built into fabric. Do I have it here to show you? Yeah, here's a little bit. It's like the gift that keeps giving. See, there's the sleeve there. It's like a little vest, a little bolero. So awesome place to find a lot of lace for not much money. I then went through that panel of lace and tried to look for images that sort of fit in the area that I had to play with. And in the end, I had to do a little bit of piecing. There was this, this here, that long leaf, there were two of them going up here and it just didn't look very decorative at the top. So I found these three flowers. I think they came off here actually. Yeah, they were down here. So I snipped them off and put them up here and just stitched it all down with a slip stitch. So it looked like it was part of the design. And then I had a bit of a gap here and because these three were hanging off, I found a random leaf to put here. Then I went back and just got some of the netting and just slip stitched it all down into position. So I guess what I'm saying is I created my own lacy feature to suit the shape of the ear. If you're lucky enough to find a piece that fits perfectly, fantastic, but often you can't. So you've got to sort of, sort of manipulate it together to get what you need. Now on this side, this piece at the top was a similar scenario. It got added into the top of the branch there, but everything else pretty much fit. There wasn't much I had to change on that side. And then I just added a little bit extra the netting around the place just to sort of make it look similar, but not. Okay, now this side of the ears, I have plans on embroidering some of these flowers and some of these leaves. But I went looking for my wools, like Appleton wool, and some of the wools I have from Steph Francis, and I couldn't quite match this yellow. They were either really bright or really mustardy. I just didn't have anything that right yellow. So at the moment, I've put that idea on hold. So unless I can find the right color, I don't really want to change the tone of the ears. So it would have to be a pretty good match. I have plenty of greens. I don't really want to highlight blue. I want to keep it as uh, yellow as I can. So whether I come back through with some lace and instead of as much embroidery, I do some lace piecing over it and decorate it. I'm, I'm just not sure. But at the moment, I'm happy with the way they are. I think I'll see how the the hair develops and if I come up with an idea somewhere on his body that I want to drift up into the ears sort of to tie it all together that possibly could happen okay so I'll put those ears aside now let's get to the bunny at hand and the whole reason we're here and I don't know how I managed to head off on a tangent with a second rabbit but the whole reason we are here is to feature this beautiful panel so 
I will be picking out elements from all over the place, depending on what sort of takes my fancy. Now, if you've watched um, Susanna's videos, she focused on this element here and she cut out the size she needed and popped that on her ears and then embellished the branches with uh, the leaves with fabrics and stitches. Where she cut it out, she put a flower at the top of the um, little sprig that she's created to go up the ear. So I have to come up with something different so that you can see so many different ways of using things. So first of all, let's backtrack. Once again, I really like the way that hessian came together. So I'm definitely going to have hessian involved on the ears, whether they'll be it'll be in the front or the back. I haven't decided. Same with the green ears. I don't know yet which will face front and which will be back or will be one of each. I, I don't know. We'll get to that when we construct him. So I've cut out my hessian and I've gone around with the sewing machine and put a little three-step zigzag stitch all the way around the edge. That's going to stop it from just disintegrating and that takes a lot of pressure off me worrying about it just falling to pieces. So that was the first step. Then I need a base fabric. So I went through my cupboard and I found this uh, linen and it's similar to this but just a slightly different colour. So in that decision alone I get sort of layers of colors. So I'm happy I had that little piece on hand. So I've cut out then my bases again. So as I said before, there's my four ears once again. Then I've gone looking for some fabric. Now if I get my, my pack of fabric out if you recall I'm working on the fabric from the French General Connect collection I'm not sure of the name of it there is nowhere here where I can see the name on the selvage anywhere so I do apologize but I'm sure if you type in French General you'll see this collection pop up but there is a few collections so either way you'll find something from the French General range fantastic and this panel the name of it is here. I'm not even going to attempt to say it because I don't speak French. Well, I did a year of French in grade eight. And I don't think I retain much bar the basics. So there's there's the name of the fabric. That's also down in the description if you wanted to, um, you know, go hunting for this panel. And like I said, I think this is the second panel that I've seen um, over the last couple of years. So there is another one out there as well. Okay, but there's heaps of panels you could, yeah. And even if you, you can't get your hands on a panel, grab yourself an adult colouring in book because these types of images are in those books. So there'll be plenty you could do to sort of create your own. Now, the next thing I've decided to do is put a layer of what we'll call pattern fabric. So I went through my pieces and I found the two that I liked. Now you're probably thinking they're not the same. That's because I want to embellish the one ear and not so much the other ear. I may put in another piece of fabric there. I, I haven't got that far, but I definitely want to do something on this one. So it didn't really matter that I had one of each print in this pack. The prints appear to be just different colours. So that does appear again, but it's a different colour. So it'd be a pale version of that or a, a torpy coloured version of that floral. So I decided what I'd do is I'd just pick a completely different pattern. So that's how the check came to be. Now, because I've got French, uh, French uh, fat quarters, they don't quite make the length of the ear I needed. But if I turned it this way, I just managed to get an ear out. So I thought that was good luck. And I do have a bit of a shape down here, which I didn't mind. So I just squeezed it out, which was super, super good. Let me just put that aside now. And I have some nice little scraps now that I'll use somewhere else on my hair. So... The next thing I did is I needed to cut a piece that was slightly smaller, about 10 mil smaller. So I got the ears that we made and I laid that down on my red fabric 
and then I just drew around it and that gave me at least a guide to bring that internal fabric in just a little bit because I wanted to see this linen on the outside. So that was the next thing I did. And now I haven't secured the pieces yet because I'm not sure what stitch I will need. I've got a couple options. I could blanket stitch around. I'm not a lover of blanket stitch anymore. I think I did too much as a kid and I just, uh, just over blanket stitch. I prefer it to be more free. So it would be a whip stitch like what I did on these ears here, just whip it down. I could do a, a running stitch right around or a basting stitch right around. I don't think I'd want to do a stem or anything, you know, intense like that. That's a very, um, it's a different sort of stitch again. And I don't think it sort of suits this whim whimsical. But I thought before I make that decision, I might start piecing out the floral treatment that I plan for here because I think once that's in position it'll give me the feeling of where I'm heading with this outside stitch if that makes sense. So what will happen at the end is this piece will sit on top of the hessian, there'll be a, a whip stitch go around the outside edge to join them and that will happen once that lies inside. So that's how it'll all end up. So what we're going to do next is work out what decorative element we're going to put on the one ear. Because I'm only going to do the one, I think. Who knows? All right, so let's put these pieces aside. We don't need them. We don't need the ears. We just need this piece and this. So I've been looking at this design because I think this panel here is going to give me the most throughout my rabbit. And it's all about finding a piece that will not only fit, but being able to take it from the overall image and leave plenty of goodness behind to use, you know, elsewhere in the rabbit. So it's just about taking a moment and looking at it and thinking, well, my ear is very thin and I'm using this is my guide. So I started placing my ear everywhere and working out what decorative piece I could snifle to sort of take it. And a lot of it just hung over the edge. So I sort of was a bit limited or it didn't have a long enough treatment to give me what I needed. So I had settled on this one. And it will just, just fit. Now, remember my ear is a fraction bigger due to the fabric behind. So where it comes out past, like there's a little bit there. If I fold that edge over, there's a little bit that will peek through. That I think will be fine because that will make it drift out past the ear, which I think will be quite a, um, a nice treatment. There is another one here, this little flower here. He's not bad either, but he would sit really neatly inside. And I think I want my floral treatment to come past the check edge. If that makes sense. So the next thing is to cut it out. And I thought, oh, so I don't jigger up my fabric and I have, you know, other elements that I can use. I got my friction pen. And if you can see, I've just gone around it where I would think I would want to cut. Now on this side, it does get a bit tricky. I lose this leaf. So that's an issue. What I might do now that I look at it again is I might duck uh, I'll zoom in. Okay, you see my red line better now. I might cut in here and I know I'll lose, I'll lose a little bit of fabric with here, but we might be able to put something decorative here to disguise the fact. That way I'll keep that leaf in its entirety. So I'm coming through here as well. And I was like, do I keep this little guy or will I lose him? But what I might do is I'm going to include him for now. 
and very carefully cut around him. Worst case, I cut him off if we don't need him or if he hangs out too far past the uh, piece, but at least he's in and I've kept that little leaf intact. And at the end of the day, if I was to use this element left, that little leaf could go and I wouldn't miss him because I could even lose both of those little leaves. But I guess it's all about cutting out as much as you can and keeping your options options open. So let's let's just fussy cut around this. It's taken me days to get to this point because I've just, I don't know, I've been quite nervous about cutting into this fabric. I don't know why. I think it might be because it's a piece in its entirety and you would normally just go around the outer perimeter and make a cushion or a wall hanging or to actually cut into it has taken a little bit to... It's taken a little bit for me to do. It's silly, isn't it? It's not like it's a piece of gold or anything, but I don't know. I tend to treat it like it is. But now that I'm up, up and away, and I guess have a plan, I think that's probably half of it. You don't know what you're doing, so you start second guessing and you're like, oh, maybe there's something better that I could be doing. You just start being silly about it. Okay. Now, I don't want to ruin the integrity of that branch, so I'm going to come in there a little so that keeps that flower stem looking good. So we're fussy cutting out our little element and then we'll pin it to the ear and maybe we might be able to make a decision on what stitches we start to use but it'll be a combination I think of fabric and stitches but the first thing will be to you know get it down in the right position and pinned Okay, now we've done it. We've chopped in and we've kept, you know, the surrounding images. So even these little pieces, they could be cut out and pieced somewhere. If you found that your my piece, you know, isn't the right size and we need another decorative element, we could come back and pinch that little guy there. So it's like, uh, there's heaps that you can do with these panels. All right, so let's get rid of that. Let's bring our ear back and have a little look at how this will. Might have to go up a little bit. That's it, so we can see that ear. Oh, yeah. I like that, and that fits really well. Yeah, really good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to pin that into position. Just move that slightly and get some pins holding it. Lovely. So I'm going to have one ear that is the red and one ear that is decorated. What an odd little rabbit. It's not a rabbit, it's a hare. Must get that right. Yeah, happy with that. Really happy with that. And even that we've come in close there to that stem, I don't think it's too much of a problem. I don't think you'd even notice it unless you really, really looked. But we can always add a patch there. You know, maybe we muck around with some little patches. Let's have a play and cut some of these little pieces out. Don't know if 
I'll like it or not, but you can always just have a play. They'll they'll be used somewhere. Try and get my sides as straight as I can. How about we slide that? into there so it looks like it's joined so there's one little patch so yeah I don't mind it maybe we need some other fabrics don't want the check because, or well, maybe we'll want some lace. I have a very old doily here that is so old, it is like disintegrating and I'd love to find a home for it. Let me show you that. Look at this. Look at that old girl. It's just, it's falling to bits. And I thought it sort of fit. See that floral shape? It sort of fits with this. So I'm thinking this rabbit is going to own this doily. So maybe there's an opportunity that I bring in some lace here. Yeah, I think I will. I might do a combination. I did like that there. Just as a little patch. And I could probably... And it sort of matches the ears. So I like the fact that that's tying it together. I'll cut a little bit more of this fabric. And then I do want to embellish in here with some fabric as well. So maybe Maybe that could go up there. So it's about collaging. Oh, you're not even on camera. Sorry, guys. Put it on an angle. Then I'm just looking at this little, little floral treatment here. Let's cut it out. Oh, such an old girl. It's a wonder it hadn't ended up in the bin because most people would look at that and go, oh, it's falling to bits and it'd be gone. Be in the bin. Like the, it, Look at that. It is so thin, that cotton fabric, that it's barely, barely holding together. But even these little scrappy bits like that there, I know it doesn't look like much, but they're great little pieces just to create texture in something let's let's have a play with working that into the design like so what else have we got there there's these little flowers little itty bitty ones I wonder if they can be somewhere in there as well. Maybe part of these. It's got a little stain on it. I'm sure there'll be another one. Let's have a look. There's one. Not that the stains are an issue really. Like that just shows it's had a life. That's super cool too. All right, so maybe there's an opportunity to build into this some of these little decorative pieces. There's a single little flower. I wonder where he could go. Maybe he could be a bud where these little leaves are. He could be a little bud coming out from the side. Oh, we do have... We do have a, a bud ending there. 
yeah let's pop let's pop it there because if you can see let's zoom in see how the design ends there so let's use that as the flower coming off of it do we have another one because there's another little butt over here yep there's one let's pinch this little guy might leave so it's like collaging basically there's a little bud to go there i like that so let's get rid of them i don't like the little leaves that were left so i might just do a stab pin in i can always um, take a photo of all these little elements and then I can strip it back to the first step which will be stitching down the piece, stitching down the background and then come back and have a look at my photo and see where, I don't like that, I think I want to embroider that or do something with it, whether there's a piece of fabric goes there, I don't know, or embroidery, what else have we got on our little I do like that there. I wonder where I'm going to cut. Or do I take that center? I'm going to cut this one out first and see if he can find a spot. Can't believe how similar this lace design is to the actual piece. And there's probably 50, 60 years difference between the two floral drawings. So obviously being a well-loved doily. So we've got a, a dead end here. You can see the branch comes out and goes nowhere. So there's an opportunity to lay in something there which I like. Yeah, I don't mind that. It's just about building up the layers. Or do we, do we have this piece coming up here? Let's get rid of that. Isn't this just fun fiddling around? We get rid of that one up there and bring this guy down into here. That's better. That's better. They're like little buds that haven't opened and that's where it has opened. Oh, you can't even see. Sorry, guys. It's about finding the right height so that you can see what I'm pointing to and you can see an image building. Yeah, I wonder if this sneaks in at the top here or not. I can't decide about this. I'm wondering if once I get red stitching everywhere and then the pop of the white lace this won't be needed is what I'm sort of thinking won't know until I start and I guess it's going to come down to what edge that check ear is going to be stitched down into there's one that's open so if there's a, a red edge here for example I think that will be um, probably enough and then around the outer edge where's my other ear here's my other ear I really need a white edge in there I won't use this thread because it's 
a different thickness to this. So there's a, a little one of that kicking around here somewhere. So that edge is in here. Then it comes down to what edge I do as my whip stitch to join the two together, which I don't think I can really make a comment on yet until I probably do this and then sort of see where it comes together. And it'd either be red or white. I don't think it'll be red because I don't think, well, I don't know. Who knows? All I know is the check is going to be stitched down with that red. That's a decision made. You see how I lay the cotton down to give me, you know, the feeling of what colors will be where. The actual embroidery piece, I will stitch down with just normal cotton. So it sort of just disappears. I'll be, you know, overcast stitch putting it on yeah that's that's looking good so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear back my mess a little bit here and we'll start the process let's get rid of some of this rubbish I've made how quickly your space gets out of control crazy and now that I've used some of those lacy elements, I'll sort of start building a bit of a pile so that I know that they're, you know, going to be used in the future. Now I'm just going to get my camera and I'm going to take a photo of that. I probably would remember it, but I'm going to take a photo of it. And that way I can remove the pins and I'll just leave these elements on my board. I'll come up a little bit. I'm just pinning them to my board here so they don't get lost. We know that they need to find their home. And I'm going to remove this because what I need to do first is a running stitch. I can get rid of this ear because that's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot of fanciness on that one. It'll be, it'll be a little bit simpler. This is the fancy ear. So I can get rid of that. I can pin this down again so it doesn't wriggle. And I'm going to get my needle and thread. And I'm going to do a running stitch. Oh, there's Bandit. Sorry, guys. That's young bandit. So I'm just going to start down the bottom here. Might start at that peak. It sort of will secure the ear a little bit better, I think, if I start there. And it's just a little running stitch. I'm going to keep it reasonably small. I don't want the stitches to be too big because they'll detract from the um, piece inside and red is such a strong color we sort of don't want it to be too bold if that makes any sense so I won't get this all finished on video as you can imagine there's probably two hours maybe three hours embroidery here what I'll do is I'll just get the basics down so you can sort of see where it's heading what are we at? Halfway. Okay, that's good. We'll get a little bit done. So just doing my little running stitch up that side. This will really set the tone for the rabbit. I think this stitch to do his patches all over his body will be the go-to. And then wherever it's red fabrics, it'll be white or cream embroidery cotton well look technically I'm not using embroidery cotton I'm using DMC crochet cotton it's pearl cotton this color is 40 uh, 41 oh, it's a completely different color to that one 403 and 498 this is the new one I got to replace this one but they're so similar 
there matches the DMC stranded cotton colors as well so if I decided I was doing some embroidery and I needed a finer thread I can use those two numbers and that'll take me into the you know the stranded cotton world that DMC also offers which is great and they're very similar colors that I don't think um, I'd notice too much on the, a big space like this bunny that I had changed colors a little bit they're very similar you can see that. Gee, you'd have to have a good eye to pick it. Okay, so we're coming up the side here just with a little running stitch. Maybe I'll do a running stitch to join the ears together instead of an overcast stitch. See, I knew something had come to me. So what I'm saying is when I go and join it all together through here, I do a running stitch as well. Instead of that big overcast stitch. Okay. If I just get up and around the corner, I can then move on to showing you how I stitch down the floral piece from the panel. I'll go until I run out of thread, which might just get me back down the other side. Get that nice and flat. Okay, we're at the top of the ear. We'll do a little stitch there and we're back down the other side. Nice, simple stitch you can do. Decorative and not too difficult, which is what we like. But, you know, as I said, you could use all sorts of stitches to do this. But it's also finding something that complements your work. You don't want to have a really intensely embroidered space and then your edging is just as full on. I find that it sort of detracts from your embroidery. And I know that that embroidery will have all sorts of things going on in it from French knots to... Um, Oh, satin stitch, who knows? Haven't even thought that far. The main thing is the construction. Like, where are we heading with it? You know, getting your background sorted. You, it's like when you're painting. You know you want to paint a house, but where's the house sit on your page? What's around the house? I find that that's probably the hardest thing to figure out when you're doing embroidery as well, because you've got to make sure that if you're going to spend all this time embellishing it and making it look amazing, um, you want to know that it sits right in the landscape. You don't want to have this gorgeous painted house with all the detail of boards on the side of the house and nails that you can see in those boards, you know, all this detail and it's on the wrong part of the page or it's, too far left and you wanted a few mountains in the background but they're you know they're not the focus but you, you do need to have your house sitting right and that's what I think is probably what holds me up the quickest when I'm nutting out a project and you can envision it in your head as much as you like but until you actually put pen to paper or or um, scissors to fat, to cloth you really don't know where you're heading and that's exactly why um, I probably am doing the green rabbit because I've got so many ideas in my head that 
I was being so indecisive with what I was going to do for Red Rabbit that I sort of thought, I'm just going to make Green Rabbit as well and maybe flesh out a few things with him and then see where we go from there. And it's been tremendous help. I know I've just doubled my workload, mind you, especially if I do embroidery on him as well. <clears throat> but I don't think that matters. I think it'll be good for you guys to see a few options. And with Susanna doing her rabbit as well, I think you'll see that there's just so many possibilities. And to be honest, if you go to the Instagram page for Henrik, the scrappy, scrappy hair, the link is down below. It will just, oh, oh will I make it? Oh, don't think I will. But boy. I've come awful close. Oh, what a shame. Isn't it always the way? Not that it matters. Oh, so close. I'm going to leave the thread there at that point because I will need to. I might as well knot it. Oh, so close. Goodness me. So I'm going to need to just catch few threads it's good having these layers because you can knot things in behind layers and no one will know that you've changed threads so there's my little knot I just need a little bit more cotton and that'll finish off that last little bit so that's great now I can get rid of those pins because my insert is now secure. Let's have a look at this again. Make sure we get it in the right position. Don't want it hanging off anywhere. That's pretty good. And just pin it down. <clears throat> now I'm just going to grab my cotton. You could probably match a thread to that background so that you didn't see your stitching because I'm going to just whip stitch it down. But at the end of the day, I'm not too worried because it actually adds another layer of detail to your work. So I'm just putting a little knot in that. And I'm going to start whip stitching this down. There we go, just over and under, and that'll stop it from fraying. You could go along your piece and flip it over and put a very fine line of um, art glitter glue to the edge. That will help it um, not fray, and it will also sort of tack it to the background fabric. It won't hold it because you'd have to put, you know, a good amount, but I'm talking just a little drizzle of it. And it would hold the fabric onto the ear a little bit for you as well, especially if you didn't like using pins and having pins in your way. So you can barely see that. That's, that's going to blend in without any, any noticeable... I just had another idea while I was doing this. I could do a running stitch in the cream embroidery cotton around this piece as well. <clears throat> I could, um, like my red running stitch, run around the whole outside of it. I might do that. That would be a nice detail to actually add in as well. Oh, there's so much you can do with these things. Okay, so I'm now just keeping my piece in position, which is a little bit boring for you to watch, but I think you got the general gist of where I'm going to head with this. Once this is secure, I'll then get my red cotton and start embellishing it. 
and then right at the end I'll come back and put those little white pieces of lace into position because they'll only get in the way and they're like the little the frosting on the cake if you will it's like when you've finished icing your cake and you start adding all the little three-dimensional roses and things like that now I will um, dig out my beads because I plan to add beads to my my rabbit as well I'll have a little think about what other bits and pieces I don't think I'll go down the sequin element because I think it'll be too much shimmer for him and I'll be picking beads that are probably a little bit muted not um, crystally ones but who knows like once you start you just don't know where it's gonna take you that's a fantastic thing about this um, style of embroidery it's like slow stitch meets fancy work meets toy making it's a lot of fun and having one ear to really embellish I've just halved my workload did anyone notice that Susanna will be watching this going good on you Corinne I spent a day or so working on my two ears and that girl from Brisbane she's come out with let's just do one ear <laughs> she'll be giggling about now as she hears me say this this hair is going to be so much fun I love my green one as well and to be honest I'm not a green person not at all but there was just something about that fabric. It was such an old piece of fabric. I didn't have a lot of it. I didn't know what I was ever going to use it for. I picked it up from um, the purveyor of fabrics. She um, is down in Melbourne. Her first name just eludes me. Melanie. Melanie is down in Melbourne and I don't know, she collects the most amazing fabric treasures and she's on Instagram. I'll link her below. I need to write that down so that I remember. Hang on, let's make a note. Mel. So I'll link Melanie's Instagram page down below. And what she does is she just posts, say, 10, 15 pictures of random pieces of fabric, lace, sometimes books, sometimes sewing pieces, all sorts, embroidery, and if you like it, you just say one for me, please, or yes, please, just sort of make a comment, and then uh, Melanie will see your comment and um, put it aside, and she can hold those pieces for a week or so, so that you can sort of keep watching what she's going to put up, and you might find some other bits and pieces to add to your parcel, so it sort of saves you a little bit of postage. It's a lot of fun. This, you know, and even if you haven't been on Instagram for a few days, I just go to her page, flip through um, all of the photos that she's posted, and there might be something that I missed two days earlier, and you have a read of the description, and often she'll do five pieces or two, three pieces. 10 inches by 12 inches and to be honest that's all you need you don't want meters and meters of fabric because it's sort of all about piecing things together and that green fabric I think it was like 12 inches by 24 inches so not a big piece but for a project like this you can stretch it out I've got my two ears out of it and there's heaps still left that I'll be able to do patches on him to sort of bring his ear fabric down into his body. So really, really cool. So I'm coming up to this edge now. So I'm just going to whip around there and make sure I catch all of that. And then he, I know he's nice and secure. So the first thing I'll do next after this is done is I'll get my red cotton and I'll start outlining some of these flowers and where I can I'll pop in some satin stitch and then um, <clears throat> some beads. 
I may bring some other fabrics in, but it depends on the shape of the flower. You've got to have room for that fabric sort of to sit. Susanna's done that with that leaf motif and it's perfect for it because you've got a nice chunky leaf that you can pop a piece of fabric in and it um, will sort of have its own space. I'm just gonna trim that a little bit because I wanna see the stitching that I've done behind. See that there? I just wanna catch a glimpse of that stitch. So let's go again. So we whip around this corner. So in the next video, I will be back with a completed ear. I'll tell you everything I did because I still really don't know until you start stitching, you really don't know. And then I'll start working on getting some of the other body parts constructed, I think. I think that's the next step. I really need to <clears throat> leave the fancy work for a moment and yeah, get my legs made, all four of them, get my body made. So there'll be more bending wire to get that inside those pieces, wrapping those pieces of wire and fabric. And then once I have his, his um, you know, his torso done, I can then come back to this piecing of fabrics and seeing where this panel can be used, what elements of it. I had a, an idea last night while I was stitching the ears for the green rabbit. I know I should say the word hair, but I'm saying rabbit. I don't know. I just like the word rabbit. I had an idea of having this embroidery peeking through uh, a background, like a background, as if you'd peeled back the calico and it was all messy and ratty looking. And then underneath you see the embroidery. And I was sort of thinking about it. I think, oh, that'd be a great, great element that you could do. Say on his chest, for example, I could have some embroidery from the panel and then create like a, a rustic-y looking frame around it as if it had been exposed, like he's, you could see through him. And then I was sort of thinking about, well, that's a bit macabre. That's, that doesn't sort of sound real good on a rabbit. And then I asked my husband about it and he's very honest. He'll tell me exactly, you know, what he thinks. Some of his honesty, sometimes I think, no, that's silly. <laughs> but I said, do you think it's macabre having the chest of the rabbit or a leg or a hip or, a, you know, open as if you're looking into him? to see embroidery and he was like yeah he said that's just gross so I, don't know, I sort of started the more I thought about it, I'm like yeah that's crazy like it'd be like looking in at his vascular system and it's red stitching too like it would have yeah bizarre I don't know maybe it would have looked all right but I quickly got rid of that idea and I thought that's that's just gross last thing you want to start seeing is the internal workings of an animal. Maybe if it was, I don't know, a denim jacket would be a better idea. So what I meant is, let's say that's the embroidery on his torso and then I got a fabric that sort of was all all messy around it on him, on him as well as if it had been opened up and you were looking through into the embroidery below and uh yeah not on a rabbit we don't want that it would be deemed as inappropriate <laughs> okay so i've gone all the way up there and around that corner and stopped there so that's nice and secure i'll just bring it up to the camera and i've just done a little whip stitch using cotton that you would use on your sewing machine so continue through there um finish this little bit here and that will pretty much bring me up to the point where I can embroider. I'm just going to cut a piece of red cotton because I really want to finish that. It's bugging me and then I might say goodbye. 
we're coming up to that sort of time of the video and I will go off and do some embroidering on my ear. It'll give me something to do this evening. It's a Saturday here. You guys are watching this. Um, I, I'm going to probably release this video every Saturday, but I'm not sure yet. It'll depend on how many videos Susan, uh, Susanna makes. And then we'll sort of coordinate how we're going to release them to you guys. But they're pre-recorded, basically. And they'll be released accordingly. But as I'm making it, what I'm trying to say is it's Saturday and I've got some friends coming over for dinner. And the uh, my mate, we like to sit. She's a crocheterish. We like to sit. I talk about her all the time, Mary Ann. Mary Ann likes to crochet. And so we will pop on a movie. The boys, they'll probably go and play Xbox or something. It's where they were 15. So Mary Ann and I will sit in my craft room. I've got a TV on the wall. We find a nice movie, a period drama or something. Something ha that has lots of fabrics and embroidery. There we go. That's finished now. And um, watch a movie and yibby yabba. Okay. So I can't help myself. We've got a few minutes. Now I'm just going to... do a little bit of embroidery here just to show you where it's going to head now like I said if you can't get your hands on um, if you can't get your hands on a panel you can create your very own just find some floral floral images that you like cartoony type line drawings if you type into google um, black and white floral images there'll be something come up i can guarantee it so there's the little stem now we had a little flower there i might just take that stem where was it it was going to sit yeah, that's, that'll be fine. I'll use the drawing underneath. And then I'm going to do a lazy daisy stitch there. It's like colouring in. Whoop, I knew that pin was going to get in my way. That's why it's good to, you know, stitch it all down first. So then you can embroider away and you're not being annoyed by pins. So I've given my Lazy Daisy a little point. If you can see, you can see there the little stitch that secures it. Got a little bit of thread kicking up there. I'm going to trim that out. And then I'll come back down here. I wonder if I've got a, a red tubular bead that could go into the center of that little lazy daisy stitch just to put a little bit of something there. I'll have to have a look. That's where the beads can be utilized just to sort of put a little highlight. I just can't stop. Here we go for time, 58 minutes. I need to stop. But I think you get the general picture. Beautiful. Oh, I love this type of work. I'll just do a couple more stitches. I just can't put it down. done. I 
I'll do a I'll do these two lazy daisies stitches as well. No rush, take your time with your project, enjoy the process. As I always say, enjoy the journey. Even if it takes you a while to get going, it doesn't matter. It's all the thinking and the planning. What could I do? That would look good. Piece it out. Walk away. Lay it all out, what you think you're going to do. And then go and do the vacuuming and have a think about it. I love all that. It's half the fun is the journey. There we go. Lovely. Love it. Love it, love it. And then those two little floral pieces were coming in there and there, if I remember rightly. How come I've forgotten already? There's my photo. Okay. Yep, that's right. Those two little ones were coming in. So we can add those as well. Okay, everyone, I'm going to leave you all alone now and I'm going to go off and enjoy the process of embellishing my rabbit's ear. I will still do the cream stitching on this ear. I think that'll look gorgeous and he's going to have mix, mix match ears. All right, everyone, I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.